Hello mga katribes! Welcome to Daddy Brew TV And this is your Adventurous Math Teacher For today's video, let's discuss part 2 of lesson 4, quarter 4, estimation of parameters In our previous discussions about estimation of parameters, we discussed about point estimate the basic drawback of point estimates is that no information is available regarding their reliability. In fact, the probability that a single sample statistic is equal to the population parameter is very unlikely. Perhaps it is better to approximate the population parameter by determining a range of values within which the population mean is most likely to be located instead of using point estimate. The range of values is called confidence interval or in short interval estimation. For interval estimation, in approximating the population mean by determining a range of values within which it is most likely to be located, confidence levels are used. The confidence levels of 90%, 95%, and 99% are usually chosen. Confidence interval uses interval estimate to define a range of values that includes the parameter being estimated with a specified levels of confidence. Confidence level refers to the probability that the confidence interval contains the true population parameter. Its value is confidence level is equal to the quantity 1 minus alpha times 100%, where alpha is equal to the probability that the confidence interval does not contain true population parameter. The value of alpha corresponds to the level of significance. The value of alpha can be arbitrarily chosen. Any number between 0 and 1 can be used for alpha, but 0 0.10, 0 0.05, and 0 0.01 are the ones that are commonly used. A 95% confidence level implies that the probability of the confidence interval containing the true population parameter is 95%. Critical value is the value that indicates the point beyond which lies the rejection region. This region does not contain the true population parameter. The formula for interval estimate of population mean when population variance is known and n is greater than or equal to 30 is mean minus z sub alpha over 2 times sigma over square root of n and mean plus z sub alpha over 2 times sigma over the square root of n. Or you can use the formula mean or mu is between mean minus z sub alpha over 2 times sigma over square root of n and mean plus z sub alpha over 2 times sigma over square root of n where mean is the mean of the random sample n and n is the sample size and sigma is the population standard deviation which is also equal to the square root of sigma square and z sub alpha over 2 is equal to the z value at 1 minus alpha over 2 confidence level. Now, for a specific value, alpha is equal to 0 0.05. The distribution of mean is like this. Look at the illustration class. So, since alpha is 0 0.05, then the area of 95% is between the negative z sub alpha over 2 times sigma over square root of n and positive z sub alpha over 2 times sigma over square root of n. As you can see, one half of 
the alpha 0 0.05 is equal to 0 0.025. So in the given figure, to the left of negative z is the alpha over 2, which is negative 0 0.025. And to the right of positive z, we have the alpha over 2, 0 0.025. Okay? The mean of a random sample of size n is usually different from the population mean. The difference which is added to or subtracted from the sample mean in the computation of confidence interval is considered an error. In the formula for confidence interval, it is equal to z sub alpha over 2 times sigma over square root of n. The confidence interval can be written as mean minus e or mean plus e or mean is between mean minus e and mean plus e or mean is greater than mean minus e but less than mean plus e where mu is equal to the population mean the x bar minus e is the lower confidence limit and the x bar plus e is the upper confidence limit to find the margin of error use the formula e is equal to z sub alpha over 2 times sigma over square root of n. If n is less than 30, the original population should be normally distributed and the sample is drawn at random. The values at each end of the interval are called confidence limits. The value of the left end point of the interval is the lower confidence limit while the value of the right endpoint of the interval is the upper confidence limit. Between these limits lies the true population parameter. Now, for example, the mean score of a random sample of 49 grade 11 students who took the first periodic test is calculated to be 78. The population variance is known to be 0.16. A. Find the 95% confidence interval for the mean of the entire grade 11 students. And B. Find the lower and upper confidence limits. Step 1. To find the value of Z sub alpha over 2, let's define the given. Given the mean equal to 78, the population variance is equal to 0 0.16 and n is equal to 49. And of course, the confidence level is 95%. First thing to do is to determine the alpha. Using the formula of confidence level, that is now 1 minus alpha times 100% is equal now to the confidence level 95%. Manipulating this equation, we have now 1 minus alpha times 1, 100% is also equal to 1, is equal now to 0.95 and then alpha or 1 minus alpha now is equal to 0 0.95 and therefore alpha is 0 0.05 now let's divide alpha by 2 that is equivalent to 0 0.025 alpha is divided by 2 since the interest is on either left or right of the population mean and then subtract 0 0.025 from 0.5 and that is now equal to 0.475 or 0.4750 where do we get this value let's recall our table of areas under the normal curve so to find the z value or the critical value just refer to the table of the areas under the normal curve our difference is point 4750. So corresponds to this area is the Z score 1.9 and 0 0.06. So when we add the two, we arrive at the critical value 1.96. And this is now our Z sub alpha over 2. Now for our step 2, let us find the sigma or the standard deviation and find also the margin of error or capital E. So to find the standard deviation, let's use the formula 
sigma is equal to the square root of sigma squared. Substituting sigma squared, we have the square root now of 0 0.16, which is now equal to 0 0.4. That is the standard deviation. Now, for the margin of error, let us use the formula E is equal to the Z sub alpha over 2 times sigma divided by the square root of n. Substituting Z alpha over 2 is equal now to 1.96 found in the table of areas under the normal curve times 0.4, our standard deviation divided by the square root of 49 because there are 49 students. The result is 0 0.112. Now, for our step 3, let's substitute the values of the mean and the margin of error in the confidence interval mean minus E or mean is between mean minus E and mean plus E. And what is our mean? 78 minus the margin of error and mean is 78 plus the margin of error. And therefore, the mean mu is equal to 77.888 and 78.112. Therefore, the mean is greater than 77.89 but less than 78.11. Let us sketch our obtained values in a given normal distribution. As we all know, the confidence level is 95% and our alpha is 0.05% or 5%. If we divide our alpha by 2, we have 0.025. Since our concern is the lower and the upper limit, therefore, from the critical value negative 1.96, the value of the alpha over 2 is negative 0.025 and above the critical value positive 1.96, the value of alpha over 2 is 0.025. Therefore, the lower confidence limit is equal to 77.89 and the upper confidence limit is 78.11. What does it mean? Let us interpret. Meaning, the researcher is 95% confident that the sample mean is equal to 78 differs from the population mean by no more than 0.112 or 0.11. Also, the researcher is 95% confident that the population mean is between 77.89 and 78.11 when the mean of the sample is 70. Okay, that's all for today. Thank you for watching. See you on my next video. Bye.